I know what Brennan Armstrong needs, right? And, and I know what he needs to be successful. And I think that's going to be quite appealing to to NC State fans out there, right? It's like, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe they do want to know what it's going to take for their quarterback to be successful when you're returning uh, off a season where you had the number one scoring defense in the ACC and you still left some change on the table when it comes to wins and losses. Now, the biggest compliment I can give a quarterback, and and as we get to know each other, meaning meaning me and, and the listeners, me and, me and Dennis, uh, you'll get to know that I'm a bit of a quarterback nerd, right? I'm a, I'm a bit of, of somebody who, uh, you know, thinks probably too much about the position, played the position. I was like, you played it, so it makes sense. It's it's a gift and a curse, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I say, like, you can't watch games after you played, you know, college football the same way because... Everybody else just gets to watch the ball and have a great time, right? Ball's in the air, great mm-hmm. catch. I'm I'm noting where safeties are and things, and you just you can't turn off that part of your brain. Likewise, and it's <laughs> it makes for an interesting uh, conversation with yourself watching a game like solo, you know, in 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 the the living room. But the biggest compliment I can give any quarterback, right, and all of my quarterback nerddom is that they're inevitable, right? But there's very very few of them, right? That what that means is no matter what you do. No matter what players are around you, no matter who's calling plays, you have an ability to just raise the level of the offense regardless, right? These are the Mahomes. These are the Bradys. These are the Rodgers, the the Lamar Jacksons, right? You just bring a certain level of talent that is going to exceed uh, expectations regardless. There's not many of those, right? I mean, probably named like 50% of the active ones just then. That's not Brennan Armstrong. He's what I call situational, as most quarterbacks are right? Situational means in 2021, he had almost 4,500 passing yards, 31 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions at UVA. He returned to UVA, and he had 2,200 passing yards, 7 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. And uh, that right there is situational, right? Mm -hmm. The situation changed. A couple players left, new offensive coordinator, new play caller, and, and the situation changes. His output changes. So NC State needs to do what? They need to recreate the situation that led to 2021's production as closely as closely as they absolutely possibly could ever believe to do. Well, first of all, Robert and I, big part of that, right? Like, like, don't don't get me wrong, offensive coordinator, he was not there the year where the, the production dropped off. But also, from a roster perspective, you need a bunch of competent pass catchers. The thing he had at UVA when he was operating at his best, and again, like I said, I was watching and I was studying, was four or five guys on the field, in routes, every single play, and he could just be the decision maker, right? This is, again, my my quarterback nerddom is going to show, but when people ask, oh, who was that play called for? Why did you throw it to him? My, my, My response was always, the quarterback doesn't decide who to throw it to. The defense does, right? Yeah. The, the, the defense does. If the safety guards this guy, you throw to that guy. That's not my choice. Right? That's just following rules. Brennan Armstrong was very, very good at that. Now, he doesn't have Josh Allen's arm. <laughs> not many do. He doesn't have Drake May's arm. Not many do. Uh, to, to, he doesn't have Lamar Jackson's legs. Again, mm. not many do. But what he had was a very, very quick processing ability. Which is why, in 2021, he had five or six pass catchers with at least 600 yards of uh, of receptions. He had two 1,000-yard guys. And yeah, I'm giving someone that was like a 990 the extra 10 yards, but he had 2,000-yard receivers. When Armstrong is at his best, he is controlling the game with decision-making. Send four or five guys into the route, and Armstrong will find the open guy when he is playing at his highest level. So... So, I mean, we can connect dots here, right? The logical next step is, does NC State have the four or five legitimate pass catchers? Keon Lassane, Terrell Timmons, Porter Rooks, and today, maybe my my favorite transfer of the entire transfer season, uh, news kind of kind of breaking, and, and he released it on his own Twitter, Bradley Rosner out of Rice, mm-hmm. six foot five, 205 205-pound former high jumper, had 10 touchdown re- receptions for, for Rice last year. That helps, right? That that seems like, hey, that's that's a competent pass catcher. Yeah. You want you know why he's my favorite? Why? He's he's darn near a decade in college football. Wait, really? This is his eighth year of college football. Is that even possible? 
Apparently, he's missed like three or four seasons to injuries and okay. just keeps getting waivers. He did three years at JUCO. I don't know if he played any of them. Ended up at Rice, played four years at Rice. Now he's coming to, to, to NC State with another year of eligibility. Now he's using his COVID year. He's Exactly. Now he's After cashing in a couple medical redshirt years, he's now going to the COVID year. Jeez. So uh, Brennan Armstrong was at UVA for a long time. He was. I mean, not quite eight years, but he's, he's been in college football for a good amount of time. Now you bring in a, a wide receiver going into his eighth year of college football, which is, I mean, if you were in the NFL, that's like double and a half the expected career in the NFL. He should be on a second contract by now. He should be, yeah, he should be borderline to the point where like you want to trade him away in fantasy because he's getting too old in the NFL. You go into year number eight, it's like, ah, oh, he's no longer the youthful guy anymore. But that, I mean, it'll bring some kind of veteranship, right? You'd expect him to kind of have his life off the field in very, very good shape. They have a couple tight ends, Penix, Tootle, uh, a couple running backs, Jordan Houston, more so than, than Allen out of the backfield making catches. But uh, you have to ask yourself this. When NC State puts their offense together and they combine a, a very wide array of just humans, right, from the eighth-year veteran in college football to the the incoming recruits that I know some, some are very excited about uh, – are there legitimately four 600-plus yard receivers on that depth chart that you can send out into a route often enough to create the situation that Armstrong needs? Because he is situational. We learned that at UVA. If you put the right situation around him with the right play caller, who you would assume you have because you have the same play caller that he had during his best years in, in Charlottesville, is the rest of the situation good enough? That's what he needs. That's that's what he needs, and that's exactly what what NC State brought him in knowing, right? Because nobody knows your quarterback better than your coordinator, and Robert and I, the coordinator, got here first. <laughs> so he's he's looking at the rosters, either saying a this is good enough, right? This is what he needs. This is this is enough, or he's saying we can bring in enough, and that is kind of what the 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 offense rides on. And if you think you have a defense that's anywhere close to as good as the one it was. Last year, and Peyton Wilson, a big part of that, a van up there uh, trying to get to the, the quarterback and the, the edge rushing, like that's a part of that. If you think you have anywhere near the defense you had last year, putting Brennan Armstrong in the right situation could be the difference between contending in the ACC and, and just missing out, which I know NC State fans out there are like, I'm tired of just missing out. And I agree, you, you should be tired of just missing out.